Where the EVP-88 got its inspiration, the Rhodes Electric Piano. The EVP-88 is one of Logic's many software instruments that comes with the Logic Studio software suite. Before I launch into this tutorial about the EVP-88, I wanted to explore the origins of the actual instrument the EVP-88 is modeled after, the modern electric piano. The electric piano has been heard on many recordings over the past 50 years. From jazz to pop, its iconic sound has been the foundation of many popular albums by artists such as Stevie Wonder, Herbie Hancock, Chick Corea, Billy Joel, Portishead, Radiohead, and many, many, many others. Back in the days before modern synthesizers, it was used on tour frequently because of its portability, rugged construction, and beautiful bell-like sound. When I was in high school, I had access to a suitcase 73 electric piano and used to jack a chorus guitar pedal into it and play with jazz trios. I have many a fond memory of trying to emulate Chick and Herbie on that thing and loved every growling, beautiful note it made. So where did the electric piano get its start? Like many technologies, the electric piano got its start in... Surprise! The American military. Made from the tubing of B-17 bomber aircraft, the original electric piano got its start entertaining and rehabilitating soldiers injured in World War II. A kindly gentleman by the name of Harold Burroughs Rhodes developed the electric piano as a build-it-yourself kit that soldiers could use for music therapy. The original electric piano was named the Xylet and made its appearance in 1942. It wasn't electric at all, but many who played the instrument loved it, although it wasn't loud enough to play a concert. After the war ended, Harold teamed up with Leo Fender of the Fender Corporation. During his time with Fender, Rhodes developed the piano bass, which could be jacked into an amplifier and was the low end of the full-range Rhodes piano yet to come. Even though Rhodes didn't get to market his full-range electric piano at that time, he still worked on projects such as the Honer Clavinet, which is the granddaddy of Logic's EVD6 synth. Boy, I love foreshadowing. Leo Fender's company, manufacturer of the Stratocaster, Precision Bass, and Telecaster guitar, was bought out by CBS in 1965. It was at this time that Harold Rhodes would be able to pursue his dream of creating full-range electric pianos. His ideas were already clearly developed during his time with Fender, and the suitcase Rhodes 73 Mark I was quite the instrument. It had two 50-watt speakers installed with a beefy amplification system and laid the foundation for all models to come. Unfortunately, the Rhodes piano was discontinued in 1984, and the Mark V was the final model. In 1987, Roland stepped in and helped create the MK80 digital electric piano. Ah! Well, apparently Rhodes didn't dig the digital version of his classic, and the electric piano faded away into history until 2007. In 2007, the newly formed Rhodes Music Corporation announced the Mark 7, a fully mechanical model fashioned after the Mark 5 of Rhodes' original design. I got to play one at the 2007 NAMM show, and it was beautiful. Although heavier and maybe less portable than, say, a controller, mainstage, and an EVP-88, you should definitely try one out sometime. So, how does it work? The mechanics of the electric piano are deceptively simple. It's actually based on a concept called the asymmetrical tuning fork. A regular tuning fork is a perfectly symmetrical U. When you strike a regular tuning fork, it generates a very pure constant tone. This tone is very good for getting a reference pitch, but the asymmetrical tuning fork takes this one step further. The asymmetrical tuning fork is a small, thin rod of metal called a tine that's bolted to a really big tone bar. In an electric piano, a rubber or plastic hammer strikes the small tine, and the tone bar resonates from the vibration. This vibration was dampened a bit using magnets to control the tone bar's oscillations. Springs attached to the lower tines were used to fine-tune the tone bar mechanism. Tones would be captured by pickups, much like pickups you would see on a guitar. The signal would then be sent to a volume and tone potentiometer on the front face of the piano and then sent to an amplifier. Logic's EVP-88 uses physical modeling synthesis to allow players to control many of the physical properties that the original electric piano had. It's pretty obvious to me that this is an instrument made with love, 
So it's my pleasure to show you where the inspiration for this software synth came from. But now let's get into it. <laughs> 